Hello everyone and welcome to another historic video. So today we're going to be taking a look at a more of a classic vampire deck. And of course there is a good reason for that. With the newest set, Martian Machine Aftermath, we've gotten a new vampire surprise surprise called Markov Baron. I definitely didn't expect a vampire card out of the new set, but here we are making yet another vampire deck. So this is a 3 mana 2 2 vampire creature with a convoke and a lifelink. And it says that other vampires you control get plus one plus one. It also has madness, which you can proc when you discard Markov Baron from your hand into the graveyard, which does let you cast Markov Baron for the madness cost. But since it has convoke, means that you can also tap your creatures for mana. So if you start it out with something like Boulder and Epicure, Insulin Neonate, you can easily curve this card on turn two. And to take advantage of this card, we're also playing a bunch of other cards that discard, such as Insulin Neonate, Boulder and Epicure, Blood Type Tyrester with the Blood Tokens. We also play three copies of Fable. And speaking of which, one thing I want to mention is the fact that we are actually not playing Crucius in this deck. And the reason for that is because Fable of the Mirror Breaker happens to be so incredibly synergistic in the deck. The transform Kikijiki, copying things like Cordial Vampire, Blood Tithe Harvester, Champion of Dusk even, providing synergy and value to the deck, that I just couldn't see myself playing Crucius. And, and I have tried Vampire decks with Crucius multiple times, and I have found that Fable tends to be usually better than Crucius most of the times. So having said that, I'm going to be jumping into some historic best of three games to show you guys how the deck does. And I'll also have a post game section at the end of the video to talk about deck. So let's hop on over. Play first. Okay, that's a hand. We just need a land, right? Just need a land. Pelon's hovering over my Voldaren Epicure. Okay. This is like, um, looks like a 200% fatal push. Probably. Guess I can play the Cordial Vampire and they'll probably kill the Cordial Vampire. Which will buff the Voldaren Epicure. Wait, what? Wait, you could have actually just killed the Cordial Vampire with that, right? It says, deal one damage if it would die, exile it instead, right? Yeah, you could have just done it on the Cordial Vampire. Oh, God. Wait a minute. Deck? Where's my land? Okay. Well. <laughs> Roxa? Oh no. No. Okay. There's no way I don't get a land in the next top car, right? There's like no way. Oh my god. You know what? I'm gonna go for it. I need that land. I need that land. Although it's kind of stupid, right? Oh my god, I can't make up my mind! Okay. This... Are you kidding me? How is there still no land? 
Well. So this is how we lose, huh? This is how we lose. It's a taplin! <laughs> it's a taplin! <laughs> Bro, how? It was probably like 3% chance. Oh my god. Well. That is really interesting that they took that instead of a fable. Oh boy. So I could continue this game and suffer. Or I could concede and uh, win the next two games. I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's play four cups of Thoughtseize. Easy. And... We want to copy up Shoulder's Edict. Nowadays, Rakdos really don't play like Planeswalker. I think we'll go for Go for the Throat for Shaldred. And take out a copy of Fable because it's not a vampire. And, um... Take out Xander. I can see myself going down on Fatal Push. And some Markov Baron for sure. The more difficult it is to stick my creature into the deck, I mean onto the board, harder for Markov Baron to stick, right? Um. Yeah, let's go down on some Fatal Push. Actually, let's try this, you know? Okay, this is a decent hand. You know, every time I thought sees, I have to thought sees their thought sees. What's up with that? And when I take out their Thoughtseize, they Thoughtseize me back. Just watch. I'm waiting. Maybe there's hope? Oh? Oh my god. I can't believe it. The Thoughtseize bug, the infamous Thoughtseize bug. They fixed the bug. They finally outdone themselves. Wizard of the Coast. Now, I see that they have a Shaldred. Which does kind of suck. Makes me want to... Um, Plus, on my Champion of Dusk to gain some life. But I feel like if I do that... My Soren's gonna die, right? I think... I think we pass. I don't think we attack here. If they want to play their Shaldred, I mean, I can attack next turn, right? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um... Is this Brotherhood's End? So if it's the if it's the Brotherhood's end, um 
everything is gonna die, so I have to block in a fashion that doesn't kill my champion of dusk. I do value my uh five five a lot. Fatal push. Interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, imagine playing discard spells. Would not be me. That Soren was a go to draw. And we attack. Well, looks like the tables have turned. Opponent is stuck on lands. Last game, I was stuck on lands. Imagine losing a game because the deck told you so. Feels bad, man. Okay, do I see a lethal here? If I go for the throat and Cordial Vampire sacrifice it, I only see 11 damage, right? 12, 13, no, we're one off. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. So we'll do this. Okay. Very nice. So game three. Do I want to bring the unfairness? Do I want to bring the unfairness? We could try. It's technically bad because they got like Cars that they can ditch, like uh, Croxa. But I mean, like, ha it's it's going to be so hard to beat a turn 3 Lord Xander. You know? So maybe we cut some cars on the lower side. Try to go for this. Alright, game 3. Please don't screw me, Deg. Oh. Oh my god. That is a hand. That is a hand. Okay, that is not a hand. Goodbye, Soren. What? What do you have? Um. Why did you take Sander there? Guess I can take the Molten Impact. Yeah, I'm supposed. I think. I think they meant to pick Soren. Maybe they misclicked. Maybe they thought because they have a Bloodshy Thirst and Molten Impact, they can just kill Soren off. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, if I just draw the Thought Seize, so you can't kill my Soren anymore, problem solved. Shit, let's cycle first. We could get a one drop. Nope. More lands. That is a good one. Oh my god. Oh my god. Really? Come on now.
Okay. We don't want to cycle this uh, f a fifth land because... Well... I was going to say because we, we got a 5 drop in the deck, but... Okay. Well... Let's see what we get. Yeah, that card. Champion of the Dusk. You were supposed to show up last turn. <laughs> oh, second time. Good time. Hive is actually such a good draw here. But I actually can't play it. Reason why I can't play it is because they play Croxa. And I really want my Fable. Um, they play Strangle, right? In game one? Or was it game two? Okay, now we play the Hive. Now that we got two mana open for Go for the Throat. Let's... Attack. I think we can raise them. Especially if they activate their hive to attack here. Uh, okay. Not a bad trade off. One mana deal two damage to uh, self damage. Let's just cycle. That's fine. I think they have a removal spell, right? I don't really want to ta activate my hive. I'm just going to take it slow. Because at this point... Okay, well, if they want to activate their uh, Season Pyromancer, go ahead. That means you're not getting rid of my creatures. I think we won. Because even if they have a board wipe, we have our Hive. So unless they have a board wipe that can deal with Champion of Dusk and Hive, which I highly doubt that they have something like that. You know, if we actually draw Lord Xander, oh, we got Brother Who's Ended. We, I was going to say we could even play it, but okay. Easy game. All right. Oh. We're going to get a turn three Lord Xander. Finally. Is it going to happen? Roll. Molten Impact? I mean, that's fine. If it's Molten Impact, that's fine. I think they have Molten Impact. And they're thinking like, Oh, I can't get full value out of my Molten Impact. Uh, let's discard Blood Tithe Harvester. Yep. 
Nice, thank you. Oh, it's Jund. Okay, here we go. Damn. Lord Xander, what are you going to do? Welcome to the family. <laughs> Okay. You know, when I was playing with Galta, nobody surrendered. But it seems like Lord Xander is doing the job. Okay, so same sideboarding, Rakdos, mid-range, Jun mid-range, same thing, you know. Um, the only difference is they play Tarmogoyf. Right? Which means that we have to bring hers. And they also play Jarsoul. Right? That's a big reason to play Jund. They have Jarsoul with um, Tarmogoyf. So... What are the three cards that we have to cut? Maybe it's actually just Wolden and Epicure. Instead of uh, Insolent Neonate. Because of Molten Impact, right? We can sacrifice the Insolent Neonate to deny. Um... I can see myself going down on some Cordial Vampire. Yep. Man, it's so hard to sideboard. Uh, yes, please. Yes, please. I was going to say it is kind of awkward. Chandra. I'm kind of thinking Molten Impact. I think I can deal with Chandra. Okay. I mean, it worked out. So I can go Blood Tithe Harvester this turn. And then next turn we can go Neonate plus Cordial Vampire. Because without the Thoughtseize, it would have been kind of awkward, right? If we started out with Insulin Neonate. Okay. So we're going to create a giant board. Well, almost giant. Cordial Vampire, and then we kill the 2-2. Two, two. Now we get two 3-3s. Three, Pretty good. Pretty good. They do play the Chandra. I'm the best fire starter there is. And we're gonna get a 4-4. Four, four. Not bad. I don't need this. I'm kinda thinking about cycling the another hive here. I wanna save the Takanuma. Well, not anymore, I guess.
shoulder it. That's fine. Fatal push? Kind of annoying, but... Yeah. I still don't know. Like, do they play Tarmogoyf? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they have to play Jarsal, right? They have to. It's Jund. It's freaking Jund. Man, it's actually insane that this Lord has lifelink. <laughs> it's kind of absurd. Oh. That is a card. I'll take that. So good. The lifelink is so good. Oh, they do play Tarmogoyf. You know, what can I say? Just an excellent sideboarder. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Wait, hold up. Can I crew this and then shrink that? So there's a land creature, two, three creatures, instance and sorcery. There's also instance and sorcery here. Looks like I can't. So, yep. I don't see how we can shrink it. We'll get rid of the lands here, and then next turn we'll get some, uh, get rid of some lands on our turn. Oh my god! <laughs> They're kiki jiki! <laughs> it's triggering our cordial vampire! I think this is gonna be my last game. And uh, already, hands looking great. Oh no. Please don't tell me this is like. A prison deck. That's the last thing I want to play against. Like, nine lives prison deck. Well. Where have I seen this before? Stuck on two lands? Also, where's my vampire lord? We haven't seen it anywhere. We play four copies of it. Okay, ask and you shall receive, right? Ask and you shall receive. So I could play Cordial Vampire. Or. Or. I could. Uh, cycle the blood token. So if, if I play a card, they go to 23. So cycle this. Draw a card. Play it for one mana. That's so sick. Okay, it's just, it's just a life gain deck. Okay, I see, I see. So... They go to 26.
So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Soren. They, they need 330 life. So, uh, Champion of Dust. Draw a million cards. I think I'll get rid of the speaker. And I'll attack with both. And it, I don't really care about the Soren dying because I have another Soren. It's no big deal. Sky Clave Apparition. Well, little did they know. That our true vampire lord was actually the cordial vampire. Boom. Attack, attack. Wow. Okay. Okay, this game is just over. Like... <laughs> We got a 7-7, seven, 4-4. Seven, four, four. They played a 1-1. One, one. We're about to play additional Cordial Vampire into another Fatal Push. Good god. Okay, we just need removal spell against their deck. Right. Just remove everything on site. That's what we need to do. Just get rid of Fatal Push. I mean, Babel. I think I'll go with this. Let's go. Wow. My luck with Vampire Deck is insane. Bishop of Wing. Wow, okay, so they are like life gain deck plus angels. I think we pass. Okay, um... So we kill the bishop here. Actually, uh, let's use Fatal Push because, uh, Righteous Valkyrie. We have to kill it with Go for the Throat. We're slightly off curve, but that's okay. Because, um, Orgel Vampire is coming. That is not a cleric, right? Angel or cleric, right? So we don't care about that. That is a cleric, though. So we get rid of the Righteous Valkyrie. And now... Things are about to go... Crazy. Honestly, I feel like Cordial Vampire is literally the best. One of the best lores, for sure. It is crazy. 
Wait, you block? That's crazy. Uh, I guess I'll get rid of Sarah. That is fine. My god. They're gonna be so sad. They're gonna be so sad. <laughs> okay. Four and zero. Okay, so I just finished four games and surprising four zero. You know, surprising four zero. So, things I liked. Uh, we did the Soren Lord Sander combo once and immediate surrender. Yep, that was good. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, we didn't actually see much of Markov Baron, huh? That's really unfortunate. Um, four games, we somehow, somehow dodged Markov Baron. So many games in a row. We only saw once where we had uh, two creatures with uh, two lands and we could Voldar and Epicure, cycle the blood token, and then discard this card to play this card for only one mana, which was pretty cool. One mana, play 2-2 two, two with lifelink, buff your entire board, plus draw a card. I think that sounds like a pretty good deal, right? So I think this card has a lot of potential. It's just I didn't get to see much. And yes, I do like the Neonate and Voldar and Epicure way more than something like, I don't know, Night of the Abundant Legion, right? Because it does enable me to play this card by discarding it, right? Um, other than that, uh, we are actually playing Fable of the Mirror Breaker instead of Crucius. I know it's pretty crazy. The transform Kikijiki from the Fable actually has so much synergy with the stag it's crazy if you can copy the cordial vampire you get extra triggers when copied cordial vampire dies it's just too crazy uh you can copy blood uh blood tight harvester you can copy a lord you can even copy champion of dusk it's just the synergy is just too unreal so although you know this car is a ubiquitously busted car for every single deck out there right now. I decided to go with the Fable. Um, I could have easily gone Crucius here, uh, play Unbearer right, uh, I don't know, play Lord Xander on the side, uh, go down on some Champion of Dusk. Yes, I could have easily done that, but this is what I've uh, decided to settle on. So uh, honestly, not much to really say about about the deck other than that. I think I like my sideboard a lot, actually. We got some artifact hates with the inform of Brotherhood's End, Ancient Grudge, Planeswalker Hate, uh, Shaldred's Edict. Go for the throat to get rid of things like Shaldred, Unlicensed Hearse for Graveyard Hate, Extinction Event for Mono Green Devotion, Thought Seizes versus Control Decks and Mid Range Decks. Yeah, life's good. If you really don't want to play Lord Xander, I mean, that's up to you. You could, you could play Galta as well. I am definitely a Galta enjoyer, but, you know, I decided to try something different. So that's what I decided to do. I'm playing two copies of Lord Xander. You could even take this card out if you wanted to. Just, I don't know, play more Fable. Uh, put a copy of Dotsies if you want to, or play Crucius instead of uh, Lord Xander. That's up to you. But that is going to be it for the video. And if you guys enjoyed the video so far, as always, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all later. Bye-bye.